morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. It's good to be here. It's still warm here. I think I've become acclimated to the New York weather. Yeah, I'm at Sabbath school class. But uh, it's been like 75, 77 every day, 50 at night. Beautiful weather. But you guys can go nanny nanny Google pretty soon. <laughs> the snow will be flying. Anyways, I uh, I had a sermon and my Bible and all my stuff and my pickup truck up in New York and the truck had to go in the shop for what was supposed to be a few minutes. And uh, I, I don't know what happened, but it ended up locked up in the guy's shop. <laughs> And he conveniently, whatever, lost his phone or broke it or dropped it into a flaming fire or something happened because he never answered his phone or text. And obviously I had to get on a plane at four in the morning, so I didn't get nothing. I didn't get my stuff from that mission. So this morning the Lord gave me, now I know why though, because after going through Sabbath school class, I know why the Lord gave me a different sermon, sermon this morning. And... Uh, I want to say that we need to really think of, first of all, I was quite angry. I, you know, I, I don't generally blow up somebody's phone, but I was blowing up this guy's phone. Because I wanted my stuff, you know. And uh, I, I just get really angry with incompetence and people that don't communicate well and they're supposed to be in the service industry. And um, that just really burned me up. But I thank God I never lost my witness. And I need a lot of help. I'm telling you. The Lord has got a lot of work to do on me yet. Big time. I, I had this discussion last week in Sabbath school class with a young fellow that was teaching Sabbath school that um, it just didn't really go so well. I try to keep my mouth shut in Sabbath school class a lot because I just find myself as a troubler. But we were, we were talking about Romans 7, and the, the man that was teaching the class said that that was an unconverted man that we were talking about. And I told him he completely missed the boat, and we had gotten into a stupid... No, I was nice, don't get me wrong. I was trying to be as nice as I could be, but he, I even got his mother upset because she started talking to me about the theory of sinless living and all this, and people were, you know, got a little... You know the way it goes. Anyways, this guy is a good fellow. I love the young man, and we shook hands, and everything's good, and I'm preaching in that church October 7th. So, it's going to be fine. Praise the Lord. But anyways, this scripture, 1 Corinthians 8.2, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, does that lead anything to interpretation there? Anything? He knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. That's quite a scripture, isn't it? That is quite a scripture. Now what I'm going to try to do today, I'm going to attempt to do, is dwell on the faith of Jesus in this talk as it relates to the nature of Christ. Okay? I want us to turn our Bibles to Luke 11, 34. Luke 11 and 34. Are you all there? The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. Does that leave any room for interpretation there? Is there a gray area? <laughs> Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. 
If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. As when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I've given this little talk the name of seeing with new eyes. So, does knowledge puff up? Does it? Does the Bible say that? Yes. Where does it say that? The scripture you just read. The one just before it, does it? <laughs> okay. Can something full accept more? If you have a glass that's chock full of water, or maybe a gas can, we're talking about here. It needs to be filling up a generator. Can you put more gas in a can that's already full? No. Mm. Knowledge puffs up. Are you making any connections here? Maybe we need to unthink these things we think we know, right? So that we can begin to learn something. Let's turn to Matthew 15. What did he say that he did? 
He followed his father. My father worketh, and I do what he does. Right? All right. Turn to Jeremiah. I really, I can pray for this man. I'm not giving any names. Because I really still am praying for this guy. And I want I, I want this family, I, I want to sit down and have Bible studies with him. I really do. You know, this isn't even my Bible and it just falls open to the pages I want. Praise the Lord. You know, it's nice to have your own sword. You know what I mean? Your own sword. I, I mean, I can find anything in anybody's Bible. But I can find it really fast in my Bible. Because I even know what the pages look like. So, when you're dealing with somebody else's Bible, it's okay. But it's not yours. You know what I mean? Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. 33 and verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. Isn't that wonderful? Don't you love the fact that God is the God of second chances? The word of the Lord came to Jonah also a second time, didn't it? Praise God that he loves us so much. While he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it. For the Lord is his name. Call unto me, the Lord says, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knoweth not. Is that important? Do you believe these scriptures? Do you believe the scripture that says that you know nothing? Do you believe the scripture that says that if you ask God, he will give you what you need to know. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for that. Let's run down to 15, 33 and 15. In those days, at that time, will I cause the branch, we're not even going to get into all that, of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Praise God. Let's turn to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. said, Verily I say unto you, and except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean that ye shall be converted and be like a little child? Does a little child believe he knows anything? How does a little child act? Pardon me? Humble. Humble. Open. Mm -hmm. Empty. Okay. Right? Not filled up with all these preconceived notions. Right? Yeah. How filled up are we? How much baggage and junk do we all carry? Every single one of us. Does God want to take that garbage? Does He want to reformat the lines in your mind to help you think? And have victory? To be single-minded and eyed like Jesus was? Looking upon where you need to be? Where's Jesus right now? What's he doing? So where, what should we be focused upon? Him. Right? All right. Let's continue on in verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 
And whoso receive one such little child in my name does what? Receives me. Do you know the, the word for converted is 4762? It's strafo, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, something similar to that. But it means to turn, to twist, to do this 180. I'm walking in the wrong direction, brothers and sisters. I'm running from God as he's chasing me. Because if you don't think he's chasing you, you're nuts. And I finally stop. Because maybe I hear something. And I turn around. Now I have a decision to make. I can go in the right direction. Or I can listen to the devil and say, oh, you didn't hear anything. That wasn't real. Just keep on going the way you're going. But if we humble ourselves, the Bible says, like a little child, we can tune our ear into some, something. It's, it's, do you think God's speaking? Do you think he's working today? Do you think he cares about what's happening right here, right now? Do you believe there's angels among us? How serious do you believe that stuff? Really? Turn your Bibles to Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews verse, or chapter 5. get there to say amen. amen. Hebrews 5 and verse 8. Though he were a son, yet he learned, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. How is that possible that Jesus learned? Do you think that's possible that Jesus learned? The Bible said it, right? Do you believe it? The word here for learned is 3129. Man, then, old. The verb in this tense describes understanding through experience. Do you understand what I'm saying? Understanding through experience. Because God is omniscient. Right? What does omniscient mean? It means all science. Right? God knows all science. He understands everything. Right? But, but God took it a step further by putting himself in human flesh. Do you understand that? Jesus walking upon this earth, not just not knowing everything, but experiencing it as a man. Do you think, did, didn't the Bible say, Jesus said, I am hungered? Do you think he understand hunger? Do you think he understood persecution? Do you think he understood mockery? How about in his own family? Oh, here comes Mr. Goody Two-Shoes, who always does it right. Right? Can you imagine? How the kids spoke about it? What do you think it was like for a perfect being to grow up and learn? That's what the Bible said. He says he learned, didn't it? Learned. He learned obedience. Obedience is 5218. This very word obedience is 5218. Look it up for yourself. Hupakeo. Hupakoe. Hupakoe. Compliant submission through attentive hearkening. Attentive hearkening. What do you reckon that means? He, he was listening. He, he didn't just hear people. He listened. Right? Jesus picks up nuances and everything. Like we all should if we're really listening. Right? 
Because if you're really paying attention, you're really listening, and you really care, you see things that are happening that you normally wouldn't pick up or understand. Like people hurting, or what they need, or what they don't need. Right? Aren't we supposed to be the hands and feet of Jesus? Aren't we supposed to be preparing a generation to meet God? Look, if from this pulpit in this church, all we're doing is duplicating what all the Sunday churches are doing, then there's no need for us to be here. We should shut the doors and go join them. But there is something going on. There's a much deeper understanding. But we can be just like the Jews and wander around. How many years has it been? It's October 22nd. It'll be what? 100, 100, what? 173. 173 years, October 22nd. Listen, what I'm talking about here is a focus and an understanding that is so powerful that you could be walking through a landmine, okay? A landmine in a war zone, okay? And all this stuff that's happening, all these distractions that are happening, whether they be cell phones or faith. Remember, one time Jesus was there and he says, oh Jesus, he's, he's preaching, he's talking to his people, he's teaching them, he's, he's sharing bread with them, right? And they come in, oh Jesus, your mother and your brothers and your sisters here. What does he do? What did he say? Huh. Huh. These are my mothers and my brother and my sister, right? He was doing the Father's work, right? Sorry, I broke on you, didn't I? But anyways. You, Jesus was so focused on what he needed to do that he could walk in a landmine, okay, and hear the voice of God. Because these distractions that we have as distractions, he didn't allow them to bother him because his eye was focused continually. And if the Holy Spirit and you have that kind of relationship, you don't even have to look down. You know exactly where to put your foot. You follow what I'm saying? This is the kind of faith that we need to have to go home, brothers and sisters. This is the kind of victory that God wants to give us. But we're not ready for it. We're, we're happy with this, this, this dark world. I mean, let's all run our generators because we were just pushed back into the Stone Age for a few days, huh? Wow. Think about it. This place is dark with every light that you could put on. This place is not home. When are we going to get sick and tired of being here? Jesus has a mission and a message for us. And if we are, our eye is single and we're focused upon Him, we can go home. We really can. Because I'll tell you what, the world won't be able to stand it. Every decision will be made. When God has a people walking upon this earth, Every decision will be made so quickly it will make your head spin. Listen, 12 people flipped this world upside down. The gospel of the Bible says went to the whole world. Did they all die a natural death? John is the only one they couldn't kill. What did they do to him? Hello? Our God is greater than we have even thought. Our God is greater than we can even imagine. And we sit like a defeated foe. The Bible talks about in the Song of Solomon, we should be marching like an army with banners. Amen. But yet, you know, the devil speaks oh, stupid things and people cower. We're more focused on our stupid televisions and what the devil's parading down the road every day than we are about truth. I want to continue to read a little bit further here in Hebrews. Though he were a son, yet he learned, and I'm in verse 8, 
obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect. Being made perfect. God was being made perfect. Do you get that understanding? Do you understand what that's saying now? You don't need me to explain it to you. If you just look these words up, you get it. The nature of Christ is solved right here. I mean, these people with this deep theology, theology they, they, they confuse things. There's nothing confusing here. He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Praise be to God. You know the word perfect here is 5048. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. And this word is so much fun. Tal e oof ooh I don't know. It, it must. It's like it's like running a harmonica or something. Can you talk words in and out at the same time? I have no idea how you do words when they got so many vowels in it. I don't have enough education for that. But anyways, the word means to complete, accomplish, consummate in character, to finish and fulfill. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that encouraging? He was being made perfect. Is there anything that Jesus doesn't know? Is there any place Jesus wouldn't go that he wouldn't ask you to go? He hasn't already been. The word obey here, 5219, is hupakeo. To listen and attentively, to heed or conform, or just be subordinate. To be subordinate. Because who we are is insubordinate. That's exactly who we are. And that's how I got into this discussion with this young man. I say young man, he was probably he's probably 40 years old. Anyways. I'm not going to go there. Turn your Bibles to Colossians 1. I can find Colossians in this Bible. I'll be there. 1, 16, when you all get there, just say amen. Amen. And we'll start at 16. For by him, by who? Jesus. Were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and for him, right? And he is before all things, and by him all things what? Consist. What does that mean? Exist. I'll hold together. They find their life. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. Praise God. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind, in your mind, by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. What tense is that? What tense is that? Who? Do you believe that? Do you really believe 
that. Because if you do really believe that, you should be walking on cloud nine. Right? Reconcile <coughs> with God in the body of his flesh through death to present you what? <laughs> 